everybody, and welcome back to Skypothesis. A lot of you have been asking for a pure thief style build, and we figured that now would be the perfect time to share our take on the idea, the Sapphire Smuggler. To create our characters, we like to take inspiration from all corners of fantasy and fiction, and this build is no different. This Khajiit thief has a unique backstory that segues right into the Thieves Guild questline. When playing through the game normally, Skyrim guides your character into becoming an all-powerful, unstoppable demigod. We thought that it would be fun and compelling to scale the story back a bit, and look at the game through the eyes of a skooma smuggler. The goals, desires, and gameplay for this particular character are very different from most of the builds we have released so far, and we can't wait to share our experience with all of you today. And while there are certainly mods that would enhance this sort of roleplay, you know how we operate here. We absolutely adore pushing the vanilla game to its absolute limits and believe that constraints foster creativity. Also, be sure to check out the links in the description to join our Discord server to brainstorm builds and join an awesome community, and check out our merch shop if you want to support the channel further. I just got myself a Skypothesis antler helmet hoodie, and I really love it. But now, without further ado, we proudly present the shady feline herself, the Sapphire Smuggler. In the shifting sands of elsewhere, rival skooma gangs fight for market territory in a never-ending underground war. The city of Riverhold, located in the northernmost regions of the country, has always been a prime battleground for such gangs. On the surface, Riverhold is a bright, bustling hub known for its mass marketplace where people gather from all surrounding regions. Imperials from Cyrodiil, Bosmer from Valenwood, and even Argonians from the Black Marsh gather in the markets of Riverhold to buy and sell various wares. Unseen to the average merchant is the dark, violent underground. Skooma dealers and their gangs fight for clients, each one trying to outdo the other with higher quality and more addictive skooma. For from Riverhold, their skooma would flood through all of southern Tamriel. Betrayals, backstabbing, and murder are all part of the game. There was one extremely talented young skooma smuggler who always managed to play the game right. She started out as a runner, but worked her way up to the inner circle of one of the most prominent gangs in the area. After a counteroffer from another gang, she betrayed the first, turning them into the guards, and became second in command in a larger game. Her silver tongue kept her alive along with her quick thinking and ability to refine the best recipes of skooma. She was always on the hunt for the ultimate concoction, spending days and nights in the lab. One fateful night, she succeeded. Using a perfect mixture of moon sugar and crushed sapphire, she created a version of skooma that made every other concoction pale in comparison. Determined to keep her discovery a secret, she gathered a small group of her closest friends and confidants to leave the larger gang to form their own. They flooded the streets with their sapphire skooma, absolutely demolishing the profits of the other gangs. Their life was perfect for a time, but, like anything in the underground, quickly fell apart. Her success created many enemies, and her second-in-command sold her out to the guards, and the other members revealed her location and plans to other gangs. With the authorities and rivals vying for who could kill her first, she had no choice but to flee Riverhold. She headed north, where no one would follow. As the Sapphire Smuggler approaches the border to Skyrim, she happens to meet a young Nord horse thief by the name of Lokir of Rorikstead. She decides to aid him in his quest to steal a horse from the local Stormcloak army, in hopes that he can be her first client in this frozen land. Just as the two entered the camp in the still of night, an Imperial army stormed the camp and took everyone prisoner. She wakes up on a cart, caught for the first time in her entire life. Upon leaving Helgen, she wants nothing more than to forget about the whole blasted experience. She had never been caught, and she never will again. Instead of assisting the local Nords with their dragon troubles, she heads immediately to Riften, where the now late Lokir explained had an underground full of thieves. This would be the perfect place to ply her skills and create new contacts and buyers. The Thieves Guild should be completed in its entirety, but it is important to take your time. Where most of our builds focus on becoming an all-powerful dragonborn, this one is much more low-key. The joy of playing comes from the small thieving ventures. Delvin and Vex's quests should be enjoyed at a slow pace, so you can really dig into the roleplay of what it would actually feel like to be a thief in the holds of Skyrim. Sneaking into a business and changing their ledgers, clearing out houses of valuables, and planting stolen items on nobles is seriously so much fun. It's all about the mindset that you get in when you play, and this build is totally a get-out-what-you-put-in type of build. 
In order to have the best possible thief experience, we created three rules for ourselves when playing this build, and these three rules are extremely important to get the most out of this build. Number one is to never reload a save. It's all too easy to quick save before pickpocketing someone and quickly reload the save if you were caught to try again. We catch ourselves doing this quite often in our playthroughs, it's very effective when grinding up skills. But for this playthrough, running from guards and escaping prison is all part of the fun. Thieving missions quickly become tense and dangerous feeling, knowing that we very well might have to suffer the consequences of our actions and get thrown in jail. And it makes the prison breaks that much more satisfying. Number two is to use violence as a last resort. We've created many characters, even thieves who kill in a heartbeat and never use their stealth to actually sneak around enemies. Sneak archers are an absolute blast to play as, but we roleplay this cat as much more of a burglar than a warrior. Of course, there are many times in the game when you are forced to fight, and that is totally fine. Summon your powerful bound bow and go to town delivering poisons. But we found that this build was way more fun to roleplay when we focused on stealth first and combat second. And the third rule that we have taken upon ourselves for this build is to roleplay that your potions are skooma. There is no way in the vanilla game to create skooma. Of course, again, there are mods that incorporate skooma making and selling into the game, but as you all know, we like to challenge ourselves to stretch our creativity and make builds that work completely in the vanilla game. So for her skooma, craft valuable potions with your alchemy skill and sell them to merchants down in the Ratway. Speech perks help with what vendors will buy your concoctions. We found that this is a great way to roleplay a skooma dealer in Skyrim. After crafting a batch of valuable potions, you can make your rounds to all the vendors in the area and sell your goods to them, earning you both coin and reputation. So in order to have enough ingredients on hand, we recommend purchasing Winstead Manor in Hjalmarch and adding the greenhouse wing and the fish hatchery. You can spend your time there creating your skooma in secret. If any guards show up, you are just a simple Khajiit merchant of alchemical ingredients with a really nice garden. The main quest is tricky to roleplay as a pure thief. You, of course, could not opt to play through it at all, seeing as she has no real reason to go to war with the dragons. All she wants is to get rich selling her skooma, but then she would miss out on shouts, which can be really fun to use for thieves. We decided to roleplay that during one Thieves Guild mission in Whiterun, she remembered that she owed Alvor a favor. After reporting the dragon attack to Balgroof, she decides to help him retrieve the Dragonstone, as pretending to be on the good side of the law could definitely have its benefits. Her burglary skills would definitely come in handy in the crypt as well. After mulling it over, she decides to hire Karjo as her follower for some extra muscle and dives in. With Karjo at her side, she can complete as many of the main quest missions as you see fit for her character. It's up to you whether or not she decides to look outside herself for once and help the greater good, or stay focused on thieving missions and looting random caves. Now let's talk her hideouts and safe houses. Because we are not quick saving with this character, you will sometimes need to flee from the guards. She is the type of character that is always thinking two steps ahead of everyone, so on her first trip to each major hold, she identifies escape routes and places where she can hide to wait out the guards. Riften is the easiest. The ratway beneath the city is a great place to lose the guards. If they follow you down there, there are many alcoves you can hide in or just lead them around in a loop until they lose you. Be sure to reset Gion the Fist's traps when you pass by to give the guards a nice surprise. Next up is Whiterun, which is by far the hardest city to hide in. Whiterun is supposed to be an open sky city built on a treeless tundra, and that is very well realized in game. There are no easy places to hide that are out of reach from the guards. Her safest option is to flee the city out the main gate, but if that path is blocked, she can run up towards Dragon's Reach and scale the northern wall until she reaches the roof in the Hall of the Dead. The guards have no way to follow her up there, but it's still fairly exposed, so keeping a potion of invisibility on hand will allow her to wait up there as long as she needs to until there's an opening. Up next is Windhelm. This one is a bit tricky to pull off, but really fun once you get the hang of it. If you traverse the eastern side of the Aretino residence, you can consistently hug the wall and reach a point where you can jump onto the rooftops of the Grey Quarter. This takes a couple practice runs, but once you get the hang of it, you can perform this maneuver consistently. From the rooftops, the Grey Quarter appears much more like a broken down slum. Unfortunately, Skyrim cities are scaled down to the point where it takes a lot of imagination to picture them how they were intended. The new angle from above made it easier for us to see this part of the city for how it was intended. Up next is Markarth, where we have two options. The first is another rooftop hiding place. There are a lot of dead ends in this city and places where the guards can trap you, but this first spot is on top of the Temple of Dibella. 
This requires sneaking up past the guard tower, which might seem counterintuitive, but they actually can't follow you up there. Like in Whiterun, you'll want a potion of invisibility on hand just to make sure you stay not just inaccessible, but unseen as well. The other option is to run through the Hall of the Dead to reach Nachaunzel, where you will easily be able to lose the guards. You will need to open this path by first talking to Brother Verilus and starting the Taste of Death quest. The final hold is Solitude, which has my favorite hiding places for thieves. There are quite a few options up in the rookeries and behind buildings, but my favorite has to be the landing just over the ledge from the Fletcher's shop. Hopping over the ledge makes you unreachable to the guards. Once it's safe to emerge, you can either head to the main gate or book it down the spiral staircase under the windmill. Skyrim is old now, and while it's a great game for stealthy characters, it's no Dishonored or Thief. So much of the experience comes from the extra lengths you are willing to take to get the most out of the roleplay. Now let's move on to creating the character. The Sapphire Smuggler's outfit was chosen completely for aesthetic reasons. Thieves Guild armor is functionally the superior choice, but in this case we chose to prioritize looks as it helps a lot with the overall feel of playing as this character. She will wear the red guard hood paired with the blue hoodless Dunmer outfit and college boots. These clothing items come together very well and look like something a Khajiit from elsewhere would really wear. The hood and boots can be bought from Radiant Raiment, and the Dunmer outfit can be looted from Ulin's body in Falbthar's. The outfit is a little harder to obtain right out of the gate, but we found it a fun challenge to sneak through the dungeon as soon as possible to get fully kitted out. For auxiliary gear, we will wear a Ring of Magicka and the Amulet of Articulation. The ring will allow you to cast your bound bow with minimal Magicka investment, and the amulet is best in slot for roleplaying a swindling thief. Until you acquire it, we recommend using an amulet of Zenithar. One can be found outside the gates to Riften, up the path from the guard towers. For spells and shouts, the Sapphire Smuggler will be using the Bound Bow, Throw Voice, and Aura Whisper. The Bound Bow is very powerful with almost no investment, and a great way for a thief to survive when forced to fight. Assuming you always keep a few powerful poisons on hand, you will be able to take down any enemy you need if the situation calls for it. Potions of Fortify Archery help immensely as well. Once again, violence is the last resort for this build. She will only summon her bow if panicked and in desperate need. While using this bow slightly takes away from the pure thief feel we are going for, we felt it justified, as sometimes the game forces you to fight, and she doesn't want to draw suspicion carrying around a bow and quiver wherever she goes. It's better for her to appear unarmed wherever she goes and surprise attackers with her summoned bow. Throw Voice and Aura Whisper are super useful and fun when playing a pure thief. All of the words for Throw Voice are found on Shearpoint, and the words for Aura Whisper are found in Valthum, Volenrude, and Northwind Summit. These are useful if you decide to pursue the path of the Dragonborn, but the build can also be enjoyed to its fullest by just ignoring the main quest. Moving on to stats and perk spread. Because of the bound bow summon, we recommend spending your first 5 levels on Magicka. After level 6, we chose to level with a ratio of 3 perks in health and 1 in stamina. She does not wear armor and therefore is extremely weak to damage. She offsets this most of the time by simply not engaging in combat, but it's nice to have a decent health pool in case of sticky situations. She will be using the Atronach Stone simply because she needs the base Magicka boost for her bow summon. Magicka absorption helps immensely if you are ever caught fighting mages or dragons as well. We are playing, of course, as a Khajiit for all the bonuses to stealth, the ability Night Eye, and the overall fun experience of being a real cat burglar. By the time you reach level 40, you will want the following perks. In Alchemy, take all five in Alchemist, Physician, Benefactor, and Poisoner. Perk points in this tree cover a few important bases. Physician, Benefactor, and Poisoner are all useful for concoctions she uses for herself, but they also allow for more powerful potions to be sold at a higher price. These eight perks in Alchemy will ensure that you are making a larger sum of money when you sell your potions. Next up is Speech. We put one perk in Haggling, then perked Allure and Merchant. This is done so the Sapphire Smuggler can sell her potions to any kind of merchant throughout Skyrim. We found that moving up the tree to Master Trader wasn't as necessary for her as Merchant widens your client market considerably. Have fun traveling and selling your drugs to every merchant in Skyrim. For this build, we decided to explore the rarely used lockpicking tree. Take Novice through Master Locks along with Quick Hands, Wax Key, Locksmith, and Unbreakable. Many players, including ourselves, often brush past this tree in favor of combat skills. But when you really commit to a thief build, this tree adds some important quality of life buffs that make it hard to ignore for your next thief playthrough. In Pickpocket, we put 4 in Light Fingers, Night Thief, and Poisoned. 
We opted to use this skill much more than we have in any other build. Breaking into houses at night and pickpocketing valuables is super fun and an effective way to earn extra coin. Poisoned allows you to place potions of frenzy for timely distractions. In Sneak, take 4 perks in Stealth, then follow both sides of the tree until you reach Deadly Aim on the right and Silence on the left. Sneak will help her elude capture in the safe houses and sneak past dangerous enemies in dungeons. Finally, we will be placing just 3 perks in Archery, one in Overdraw, Eagle Eye, and Steady Hand. The Bound Bow is very powerful on its own and given that we aren't focusing on combat with this character, we didn't feel the need to focus on damage output. Archery is a last resort skill for the Sapphire Smuggler and most of her damage should come from alchemy. Alright, it's time for our favorite part of every build, the special moves. In this section, we combine in-game skills to create gameplay unique to a character. The Sapphire Smuggler isn't a warrior, so her special moves function a bit differently than from most of our other builds. Her first special move is Smuggler's Scuffle, which is a combination of reverse pickpocketing a potion of frenzy, then shouting throw voice into a crowd. This creates the perfect distraction for the Sapphire Smuggler to do her business, then leave before anyone knew she was there. We found ourselves using this skill a ton in our playthrough. It's fun to roleplay this as starting a fight. Her next special move is called Prowler, and is performed by shouting Aura Whisper and using the Khajiit ability Night Eye. Nidai is honestly more for roleplay, but we found it actually improves the effect of Aura Whisper by muting the colors of everything except for the living targets. We recommend you give this a try if you haven't found Nidai useful before. This move allows the Sapphire Smuggler to be completely aware of her surroundings even in the dead of night. You'll never startle another bandit again. Her final special move is called Silver Tongue, performed by combining the effects of the Shrine of Zenithar, Amulet of Articulation, Potion of Haggling, and the Mask of Clavicus Vile. This is a routine combination of effects to use anytime you are going on a shopping spree or when you want to sell your concoctions for a much higher price. After a brief altercation with a renowned art thief, the Sapphire Smuggler gained his respect and was tutored in the ways of the Silver Tongue. And with those special moves completed, we are ready to finish off this build video. We had an absolute blast creating this unique thief and found that playing in a more sneak first, fight last way was super rewarding. If you're looking for a fresh Skyrim thief experience, we highly recommend trying out the Sapphire Smuggler. Let us know how it goes in the comments, we really love hearing from you. Once again, thank you so much for your support. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe to help us keep the magic of Skyrim alive. We'll be back next week with a brand new build for this season, so we'll see you next time, right here on Skypothesis.